I used to love going into ChatGPT, copying my response, pasting it into Claude, and then watching the two tools battle it out to give me the best response possible. In fact, you tend to get much better results when you have language models go back and forth like this and critique each other. Now, most beginners tend to do things with just one model. They'll have their daily driver like ChatGPT, and they use it for pretty much everything. But the real Giga Chads know that different models have different strengths, and using them in those specific situations tends to get you much, much better results. So why not have them fight it all out to give you the best results each time? Well, that's exactly what OpenAI co-founder Andre Karpathy did. So he built this tool called the LLM Council that has models combat each other to give you the best response possible. And I've been using it quite a bit. And so in this video, I want to show you how you can use it yourself to have models grade and rank each other to give you the best output possible. So we're going to go through how it works, how you can actually extend it and customize it with your own features, and how to actually run it locally on your own computer for free. So let's get into it by talking about the tools that are going to be needed to make this thing actually run. So this whole project is really just powered by two pretty simple things. Number one is an open router API key. What open router is, is it gives you access to thousands of different models from different companies. So instead of you having to go out to each of these sources and figure out how to sign up for them and get API keys and even run some of the models, you can just access all of those things with one API key through Open Router. And the second thing that we're going to need is the GitHub repository, which I will link in the description below for this LLM council. So the first thing you need to do is head over to Open Router and create a free account. Again, you can do all of this for free. And then once you are there, if you click on Models in the top right-hand corner, and then come down here on this left-hand side to Prompt Pricing, you can slide this all the way to the left for free. And then what you're going to be looking at are all entirely free models, which means we can run this entire system without having to actually pay for anything. Now, if you want premium performance, like you want to actually use ChatGPT's 5.1 or Sonnet 4.5 and things like that, you can use their paid models as well. But there is this free option. So once you have that API key and you are filtered on this free version or whichever version you want to look at, we're going to hop back over to GitHub. We're going to go to the top of this repository, hit this green code button, and then choose the option to copy this URL to the clipboard. So what you're going to do is open up your terminal and all you're going to do is type in git clone and then the name or that URL that we copied from GitHub. Hit enter and it is going to clone that entire repository down into your computer. So once you have that API key and we have this cloned onto our computer, we can simply open up the project and start looking at what's inside. Now, when we look inside this project, we're going to see a bunch of different files, but there's really only two things that we need to even touch in order to get this thing working. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to say new file, and we're doing this in the root of this project, and we are going to call it .env. Now, inside of this file, all we need to have is open router underscore API underscore key, and then you are going to just paste in that key from open router. You don't need quotes around it. You don't need anything. Just paste that key in directly. And so the second thing is that if you look inside of this backend directory, we have this file called config.py. And then inside of that, there's this option for council models. So the models that you put here are the models that are going to get used in this analysis. So we have council models, which are all of the models that are going to get asked the question. And then we have the chairman model, which is responsible for synthesizing that final response. So how do we actually get these strings to put in here? Well, if we hop back over into our open router, next to any of these names, you are going to see this option, a clipboard to copy the model ID. So if I copy that model ID and I pop back down here, 
and go like this and paste it in, I now have the new model inside of this council. And so you're just going to repeat that process, depending on if you're using the paid option or the free option, you can put in whichever models you want to have here. So in order to run this thing now, all we need to do is run three different commands. So the first one from our main LLM council is that we need to run UV sync. And this is going to make sure we have all of the back end packages installed. Then we need to go into our front end and run an NPM install to make sure that everything we need for the front end is run. And then after that is all there, all we need to do is run this start script that comes inside of the project. And I will have all of these commands for you down below the video in the description. So after that has run through, we can now see that we have this localhost 5173. And so if I were to pop up now into my browser and go to that URL, I am in this LLM council running on my machine. And so what I can do is I can hit new conversation. And so what we can do now is we can actually go back to that original question that we used in the beginning where we were pasting answers back and forth between Claude and OpenAI. And we can paste that question in now and we can hit send. And so what this is doing is it is running out to each of those models that we configured and it is asking them all this question, and then it is going to have each one randomly critique the responses from each model. And so we'll look at what that output looks like in just a second. And so we can see after a minute of processing, we have responses from each of these four models. So we have a response from GPT-5, Gemini-3, Sonnet, and then Grok-4. Uh, all of which are very different seeming in their responses, which is interesting. But if we were to move down now to part two, we can see that each model now is being asked to evaluate the outputs of the other models. And so in a second, we are going to see, for example, what GPT-5 thinks of Grok-4's response. And so this is going to be really interesting, and that is exactly what we get. So if we come through here, we can see, for example, if we're looking at GPT-5, here is what all of the other models think of it. Okay. Um, so this is GPT-5.1 saying, you know, what GPT-5.1 did and what Gemini-3 did well, what it does poorly, and same thing for all of those models. So if I were to go into, for example, Grok, Grok is going to tell me what it thinks Gemini 5 did well. It's going to tell me what it thinks Gemini, um, sorry, GPT-5 did well, what Gemini 3 did well, what Claude Sonnet did well, and what Grok 4 did well. And so each of them are going to give a ranking of where they put all of the responses. And so then if we were to go down to this aggregate ranking, this is going to tell us for every single model that was run, how it got evaluated by every other model. So GPT-5.1 in this case actually had the best result. It got voted the number one response every single time it ran. Claude Sonnet was number two. Gemini-3 was number three. And Grok-4 was number four. So pretty cool. And so what we get at the very end is a final answer on things. So it's going to take that feedback from every single model and it is going to basically give you a synthesized version of whatever it is that you asked, which in this case is a weight loss plan. So this is pretty cool, but if you're anything like me, you would really love to extend this thing, right? Take the core concept and start building more and more advanced stuff on top of it, because there's a lot that you could still do with this tool. And so what's a better way to honor the fact that this was a vibe coded project than to vibe code our own additions into it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use anti-gravity and we are going to try to add in some new stuff. So there's a, a few things right off the bat that I think will be really cool. Number one, I'd love it if we gave each model what its actual ranking and critique was and allowed it to actually have one shot at updating its response and see how that influences things. And number two, I think it'd be pretty cool if there was a rag capability where we could actually go out and do searches based on this information that we're getting back from these models and kind of use that as a critique to make sure that what they're saying is actually true and not a hallucination. 
So for purposes of just this video, let's work on that first concept, which is seeing if we can give them a chance to defend their positions. And so in this case, we're going to use anti-gravity as an IDE, and we are going to tell it what we want it to do. We want to add a new feature that allows the model to correct itself after seeing the peer critiques. And then we're just telling it like where this fits into the overall flow. So we're going to feed each model its own initial answer plus the specific critiques that were written by the peers. And then we can give it what the prompt is going to be for the prompt engineering side. And then we're just saying that last stage is now going to receive the updated answers instead of the, uh, the first answers. And then I'm just telling it that we need a separate uh, front end and we need the back end for it, obviously, as well. So we're going to just kick this thing off and we are going to let it build out a plan. We'll give feedback on the plan and then we will let it roll. And so we can look at this implementation plan that we got generated for us by anti-gravity. Um, I've reviewed it and it seems good, basically specifying all the changes that need to be made in the functions that handle this council. So we're basically adding in this step 2.5 for the self-correction. And then we are making sure we send those events through to the front end so that it knows that it's in that stage. And then we're going to also modify the front end to handle this new stage 2.5. And then we are good to go from there. So we're just going to hit proceed and we are going to let this thing move through, implement the plan, and then we will check it out and see how it works. So this feature just finished. It took maybe, I don't know, five ish minutes, something like that to run through. And we have this detailed walkthrough of what exactly was changed, what was done. And so if we hop back over. I have pasted our initial question back in. And we are going to see what type of output we get. All right, guys. So this thing just finished moving through. And it looks like if we get down to the self-correction. So this UI is obviously kind of shitty. We could fix it. Um, but now they've incorporated all of the peer feedback. So they took all of the feedback from the other models. And they have now integrated that into each of their findings. And then... Each of these is now being passed in as the actual uh, final response to us. And so it's interesting because if we go back now and we look at previous responses that we had from before, we had this kind of giving them the opportunity to improve one more time, our answers have actually changed. And so it used to tell us that the plan isn't there yet and gave us some reasons why. And if we look at the answer now, it says that we are right on the money, ready to go. And so there we have it. Awesome system that can help us get the best out of every single question that we have. And you could use this literally for anything. We used it in a meal planning example right now, but we could just as easily come through and ask it to help us dial in a UX, dial in our UI, help us figure out a problem or a philosophical approach for our app, whatever it might be. We can use this system to get much better thinking out of the models every single time. Now, there's a lot that we could add on to this, making it a domain expert in certain areas. Like I said, UX, automation, coding, business-oriented things, whatever you want, you can codify that in. You could even have it rotate different types of councils depending on the question that gets asked. If it's a coding question, maybe it goes to different models than if it is a health and fitness question. Either way, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal. If you like this video, check out my channel where we do a lot of tutorials like this. But that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.